Well, hello there, and welcome to A Film A Day with me, Jordan Woodley. And today, I'm continuing the uh, blockbuster um, theme that I seem to be going through this summer, as we are now um, well into blockbuster season. Not with a classic, but with a new release. Uh, that being the Bob Odenkirk-led action film, Nobody. And it's funny, really, because I remember hearing about this film sometime early last year. And it's, just, it's one of those astounding things when you hear about an actor who you would not associate with an action film being thrown into this incredibly John Wick style film. And of course, the trailers come out and you think, I don't not like Bob Odenkirk kicking ass and taking names, but it does feel a bit of an odd mismatch. And what it does, it's almost like the reverse of um, how with action stars, every action star is obligated to do a um, family-friendly film where it's normally about your action hero um, doing, you know, looking after kids in some way, or protecting kids, or protecting a family. So, of course, the, the progenitor being something like Kindergarten Cop. Um, you had the pacifier with Vin Diesel. Sorry, Kindergarten Cop with Arnold Schwarzenegger, pacifier with Vin Diesel. Um, recently, you had that one with Batista and the little girl spy something. I didn't see it, so I can't quite remember what it's called. But it's all, that almost feels like a... Oh, you're an action hero who's becoming incredibly uh, blockbuster, um, equitable. So therefore, we need to make you broadly appealing. You must be in a family film. And it's almost like the reverse. Like, Bob Odenkirk is an incredibly versatile actor, considering, you know, like a lot of um, comedy, you know, people who were entrenched within the comedy circuit. So I'm thinking someone like uh, Ben Stiller... Um, someone like um, Will, um, oh, my brain is going right, you know, from um, Foxcatcher, um, completely going blank, but, um, you know, you, you get this slew of um, comedy actors who, of course, once they've been sort of become known for their um, comedy style, want to then go into more serious, more complex, dramatic acting. And of course, with Bob Odenkirk, that he became infamous from being in Breaking Bad, and then into Better Call Saul, where, which, which some people um, praise him even high, more highly than they do um, for Better Call Saul. Well, they, they, some people lift Better Call Saul higher than Breaking Bad. Me, not so much. I still think Breaking Bad is the better one of the two properties, but it is a close-run race. And it is that strange thing where, of course, he he's becoming an increasingly bankable star. And yeah, it is a strange thing to then turn around and say, fine, the next thing to demonstrate your versatility is to do this incredibly action-heavy, um, all-out fight film. But weirdly, it works. It kind of works. Um, it, it's a funny one, because I, I suppose we're going through an era now, and I, I have a friend who is more than a decade older than I am, and we talk often a lot about our generational relationship with cinema. For instance, he grew up, of course, in the peak of the the um, Arnold Schwarzenegger Stallone um you know, that, that era of action heroes. Whereas, of course, by the time I was coming of age and, and, and really sort of developing a taste, superheroes supplanted the action film because we got everything we wanted from an action film in a superhero film with more to it. Where, of course, you know, there is a generation of men who and women who love that kind of one man army style stories, you know. Um, of course, you're sorry, I also throw someone like Jean Claude Van Damme, and you know, where it's 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 there's no real plot to it, it's normally ex military type guy or maverick cop or something 
you know, going up against an unstoppable wave of, of enemies. Almost like a precursor to a video game. And weirdly, we're almost reaching a time now where that's becoming popular again. Obviously because of John, you know, John Wick being a major um, influence in that respect. Of course, John Wick, on some level, revitalised the genre. Um, where you get that sense of this character doesn't have to have any law. It's not based on an adaptation. It is, you know, it is just one person who has remarkable skills going up against, you know, this this gang or army or militia or whatever combination of wave after wave of bad guy. I mean, I'm possibly being a little unfair because, of course, I have to give credit to Liam Neeson, who, for a long time, I'd say a couple of decades, single-handedly was trying to hold that genre up by himself. But I do think it came back with John Wick, and, it get, and John Wick specifically stylized it and gave it a, a new sheen so it felt different than what we'd seen before. And nobody... Uh, the comparisons have already been made that nobody is a very John Wick-esque film. It's about a, a guy who seems like a very normal person. Okay, someone who's living in suburbs. In John Wick case, maybe not so much a normal guy, but he just seems, harm, you know, harmless. <laughs> Whereas Bob Odenkirk seems like a normal suburban dad who then, for whatever reason, gets activated and turns out to have a history of being this, you know, unstoppable killer, you know, um, in, in John Wick's case, of course, being the legendary Baba Yaga. And, and this is very much in that same um, body where he, he is this guy, this auditor who was known as, no, you know, that people know as nobody, that he would go in. And there would be no survivors. He, he would go, you know, to, to um, deal with problems on behalf of CIA, FBI or, or someone. And I have to say, the film is... If you're going back to that action style of the sort of 80s, 90s, it does have that sense of... It's not really a great deal of a plot. Because it is... He has this incredibly dull... Um, formulate domestic lifestyle that that I mean the film opens with this practically like a cyclical routine that almost feels like he's trapped in this mundane suburban life where it's the same thing day after day after day after day and the fact that he not only is he um you know hiding in plain sight but he's so good at hiding that people you know when there's an incident of, of some burglars in his home you know, people are almost bullying him over the fact that he didn't jump in and try to have a big confrontation. It isn't anything that annoys me in the film, specifically. It's the fact that we, this, the world of this film seems to believe that everyone should be fighting their burglars. That he keeps getting ribbed by a bunch of different people about, oh, you know, if it was me, I'd have been fighting them and protecting my family. When, in, in a normal, reasonable world, a sensible person would not choose to, to you know, especially with their family within close proximity, engage in with, with in any kind of tussle with burglars, particularly armed ones. But this is a... Like John Wick, this isn't quite our world, and it increasingly becomes less our world as the film goes on. And what I like about it is the fact that it's, it, you know, Bob Odenkirk kind of takes it on the chin you kind of get that sense, and of course over the last couple of weeks I've talked about the fact that you have these characters who do a lot of internal processing and you're watching them mostly through their eyes trying to sort of decide what they're going to do. And you kind of get that with Bob Oden Odenkirk, where you get that sense of the more people are ragging on him, the more he feels emasculated, um, emasculated and, and trodden on. The, the, the more he's about to snap. So that when the trigger comes, the thing that actually makes him decide, he has to um, retrieve a really insignificant item, but important to him and his family. It's so insignificant that, that, that you think, oh, he definitely was this, was... this was coming one way or another. And the film is very basic after that. It is him... Basically, he, he, going after the burglars who broke into his house, 
and then that and then that having a because of a decision he makes having a knock-on effect upon people who we going after people he shouldn't have gone after that of course escalates and escalates to the point where he's fighting armies again as i've said and it's very very simple in that respect and again there is you get that real john wick sense of it you get that sense where a thing that that john wick was really um admired for where and, and this definitely doubles down on that where you get that sense of this person is impervious it's video game rules and yet at the same time what grounds it is the sense of tiredness and injury now it was slightly less believable with keanu reeves and as we've gotten through the john wick trilogy he's become more and more unstoppable but you've got that sense of him running out of bullets having to think of ways to improvise weapons if he was you know shot at there was a genuine sense of him potentially being injured or tiring himself out and in this it's the same thing with Bob, and more believably because bob odenkirk doesn't look like an unstoppable machine he looks like a normal guy and yet you see him almost like he's relearning the ropes that he has all this knowledge and ability in his mind but because he sort of rested for so many years but for decades he's having to relearn like or at least re um yeah relearn i suppose how to how to uh, or revise how to you know use his skills again and it's just it's ridiculous it's a it's, it's a silly nonsense film but it's fun in that respect and bob odenkirk does genuinely and, and understand and um purportedly he did do a lot of choreography work he did a lot of work to get himself in the right shape to at least believably be this character and you believe it you genuinely you know he does look he when the switch is flipped you genuinely believe he is this machine man this this uh, nobody who who you know just is just a unstoppable machine what i like i suppose as well because i do think there's something else in this film I i'm very conflicted and if there is an issue the issue is whether there's a narrative beneath it a subtext or not because i do wonder whether there is something about um the way that he's emasculated in the first section of the film and the way that he then switches and becomes this monstrous figure does make me question and the fact that like he goes from people bullying him for not being enough of a man his him being disconnected from his wife and then when he re becomes his true self all of a sudden is able to communicate with his family better and express more and talk more and whether it's it's supposed to be endorsing the idea of sort of oh this person it finally gets to be their real self which is strange because obviously he's a violent unstoppable killing machine and then you think well yeah. or is there a commentary about the fact that perhaps we shouldn't you know the fact that you know once he's awakened you know unending violence happens and the fact is he was happy in his life as it was before and that was the the trick he was actually very happy as he was and yet it's unclear because the film feels like it indulges itself so much and it puts him down so much for at the beginning for not being enough of a you know a, a jumping in and, and and kicking ass that i do wonder is there a commentary on masculinity and you know the desire to be this action hero to be this this champion who kicks ass and and kills villains but like with the tomorrow war i do think it gets a little confused about the message but if you're thinking of it of being uh, taking it for what it's worth it is some real good mindless fun plus um to mention his supporting cast uh, Riza and um Christopher Lloyd Christopher Lloyd playing his dad are really fun even though their roles are fairly small particularly Christopher Lloyd who I think you know has is like JK Simmons against Chris Pratt I think Christopher Lloyd really bounces off uh, Bob Ob Odenkirk in a really fun way and like I say when it gets to the big action escalation it does become some really 
mindless, meat-headed fun. Now, uh, comparing it to uh, John Wick, I do think I, that John Wick's law is more interesting, and I think the world of the assassins is significantly more interesting than nobodies. But then I think that's because we've had John three John Wick films, um, whereas if you were to put it alongside the original John Wick, there was only so much that was being implied. Not to mention the fact that there's no reason that nobody and John Wick couldn't exist in the same universe. And wouldn't that be fun to see uh, Keanu Reeves versus or alongside Bob Odenkirk? Which is definitely something somebody is at least considering somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is fun, silly. It's a really nice running time, 90 minutes. And that, you know, it's quite, it's a breath of fresh air, frankly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's fun. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please hit the like button, uh, comment below and share the video to uh, help me in the algorithm. Uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell to get notifications of when new videos are uploaded. And check out my back catalogue of almost 200 videos. We're getting very close to that 200 mark and I think I have the perfect film ready for it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jordan underscore Woodley, where I'm always tweeting about TV shows and films, and I share these videos once they're uploaded on YouTube, either the day of or the day after. Thank you for joining me. Take care.